it is written in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life this verse refers to the same God that I've never seen who appears to be absent but said he'll never leave who sits high on his own throne in the sky while there's innocent lives lost why isn't he compelled to intervene if he loves this world so much, why is it hatred filled? Doctors prescribe us drugs to make us well, but what's it take to heal? The scriptures say he breathed life into us all in the book of Genesis. Why does it seem as though we were made to kill? Continuous violence, the problems I see are escalating. TV promotes all the evil I see perpetuated. I'm losing hope, I'm left to face it on a daily basis. You told the church you'd be back soon in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 7. So. In my mind, I'm thinking take a look around cause now will be the perfect time. You came to find the law, so why does it feel like I'm losing my mind? I thought I would give you a call. Hello God, are you on the line? I feel you should explain yourself, but then again, who am I compared to the great I am who plays stars in the skies? I've attended Bible study and still remember most scriptures I've read, but I still struggle with the words that you said. In the book of Philippians chapter 419 is a promise that you made to supply all of my needs. Honestly, I can't agree because as of lately you haven't. Hard to believe it's true when I'm staring at empty cabinets. I mean, who am I kidding though? How can I even know if you're there or even care? Who knows if you give an ear to my prayers, it was written. God, I know it was written that you died on that rugged cross so that I'd be forgiven. But can I truly be changed? Because I ain't feeling no different. All these questions that linger inside my head leave me sickened. Although I know... It is written. I wanted to welcome you all to our Shalom Christian Fellowship service. You are very welcome. Thank you for being with us today in our online service. I have got a word from God and I'm very excited to share with you today. And I'm very sure that you are going to be very blessed today. Please now, I want to invite you, gather your family. Be quiet in God's presence. And let the presence of the Holy Spirit touch your heart. If you can, please close your eyes right now. And I want to pray for you. Stop doing what you are doing now and listen to God's voice. Father, we are here gathered in your name. You deserve our honor and glory because of everything that you created. And we are here to give you our best today. I pray for all my brothers and sisters. They are receiving today this word. And also they, all those who are going to worship you. Touch their lives. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon their lives. And speak to us today. You are welcome Holy Spirit in our lives. You are welcome in every home right now. Touch your people's life. In Jesus' name we, we pray. And you give him all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. Your love is relentless, Father. We worship because you are carried us. You are covering us with your grace, with your love, and with your power. Receive all glory, all worship. In this place, in Jesus' name, let's praise Jesus.
for your great love. Hallelujah. We praise you. We worship you. You have been so good to us. We raise hallelujah to you, Father. The Bible says, but I will sing of your strength in the morning. In the morning, I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress. You are my refuge in times of trouble. The Bible teaches us how to sing in the midst of the storm. When we face our enemy, we have to sing to the Lord. For the Lord is good and His love endures forever. Amen? So if your heart is hurt, praise Jesus. If you are fighting a hard fight now, raise hallelujah. Raise up here a hallelujah because up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is going to be the thing, and the king is alive. 
I raise hallelujah to you, Lord. Blessed be your name.
We sing how great, how great is your name, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
is great. And now I would like to pray for you and your family. I would you like to minister faith to your heart. I would like to ask God to touch your life. If you can, close your eyes. Father God, we are so thankful, Lord, because you are great. Nothing, no one, no, no, no one else is, great, is greater than you, Lord. And we are so thankful, Lord, because we can worship you, Lord. We can give you all the glory, Lord, that you deserve, Lord. And we ask now, Lord, that your power, that your power can pour, be poured out upon each family, each person that is listening to this service now, Lord. I ask for your Holy Spirit to touch each heart now and change lord move lord everything that is holding their hearts in the darkness lord in the feelings lonely or depression or pain i declare in the name of jesus go away go away and father pour out your peace minister to each, each one of my brothers and sisters lord your peace your presence lord and touch their lives lord you know those who are going through hard situations lord and their families lord and i pray for you to give directions give wisdom bring peace lord to this family lord you know those who are seeking for a job lord and i ask for you to open the a door for them lord give directions lord those who are struggling financially lord i pray for you to bless them lord and give them wisdom how to manage the money that they have in their hands lord Bless this house, Lord. Bless these people, Lord. And thank you very much, Lord, for the opportunity to worship you, Lord, because you are a great God, Lord. There is no one like you, Jesus. Thank you very much, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I bless you. Be blessed. And now prepare your heart to receive the preaching. Prepare your heart to receive the word of God. I'm very sure that you're going to be really, really blessed. God bless you. Hallelujah. All the glory belong to our God. All the glory belong to Him. How is good to worship Him. How is good to give Him all the glory and honor. When we worship Him, the Holy Spirit come upon us. And we are filled with His holy presence. And now I want to share a word with you. And today we are going to start a new series of messages called the Holy Spirit series. Hallelujah. Today, the message today is knowing the Holy Spirit part one. I'm going to speak about this wonderful, beautiful person that is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm going to go to the Father, but I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, and He'll be with you, and He's going to be your helper. And I want to talk for at least four weeks about the Holy Spirit. Please close your eyes. I want to say a prayer very quick. Father, I thank you because you gave us your Holy Spirit. Jesus, I thank you because you came to introduce the Holy Spirit. Father, God, teach us today. Father, teach us how to walk and how to live with our mentor our companion, our helper, our comforter, and our friend, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, speak to us today and use me in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to talk about the Holy Spirit. And this first message will set the foundation. And we are going to read today some verses that talks 
about the Holy Spirit. And I want you, if you can, please take notes and read these verses again. All the verses that we listen today, please take notes and read it again. Because I know the Holy Spirit are going to speak to you and we need to listen from Him. And also, my advice to you today, learn as much as you can about the Holy Spirit. Learn as much as you can about the Holy Spirit. If you want to meet this person, that is the Holy Spirit. If you want to have a relationship with Him, with the Holy Spirit, start by first learning about the Holy Spirit. When I go to some countries that I never have been before, I want to know as much as possible about that country. In order when I go there, I can enjoy the place and the time. Also before I started dating Fabiana, my wife, I tried to know as much as possible about her. Because I wanted to know how she really was before I married her. And I was interested in her. When you start learning about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, He takes note of that. And He sees that you are interested in Him. Many people may say, if the Holy Spirit wants to reveal Himself to me, He will. I don't have time for that. No, no, no. You need to learn about the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, years ago, I had a great, wonderful, and powerful experience with the Holy Spirit. But before this experience, I spent years and months studying and reading about the Holy Spirit. And I was so excited because I studied a lot. I read the Bible. I read some books. And I said, and I was thirst about the Holy Spirit. And I have a great experience with Him. And many people, they may say, I want the Holy Spirit, but I don't want to know about Him. It's impossible. To know the Holy Spirit is not necessarily how broken you get, but how much do you know about Him? Or how much do you are curious about Him? Because you need to show that you are really interested in Him. I told you, I tried to know a lot about my wife Fabiana. She is translating there. Before I started, before I married her. And I tried to know many things. And also I, I showed to her that I was really interested in her. You have to learn as much about Him as possible. When you read the Bible, please, when you read this Bible, take a pen and mark any time it mentions the Holy Spirit. Right? This is my Bible in English. 
But my Bible in Portuguese, the Bible that I read many times, I took notes, notes about the Holy Spirit because I was thirsty and I, I, I really wanted to know Him. And remember one thing. God the Father is the throne. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. And the Holy Spirit is among us. The Holy Spirit, my brothers, he is not in heaven. The Holy Spirit is on earth. It's only the Holy Spirit that is here. Jesus lives in you, yes, but he lives in you through the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, I'm going to go to the Father, but I'm going to send you the Helper, the Holy Spirit. And he will be with you, and he's going to teach you. And this is why it's so important that you have this relationship with him. Remember... Remember that anything God will do in your life will be through the Holy Spirit. Everything that God is going to do in your life, my brother, is through this person of the Holy Spirit. And my question is, how is your relationship with this wonderful person of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is, the pro, is probably the least understood person of the Trinity. He has been described as force, as a force, as a ghost, a power, dove, fire, a second class or replacement God. And it is vital... For the church of God to know the, the Holy Spirit. To learn to relate to Him. And to understand how He manifests Himself. Most of historic churches in Brazil and also here in Ireland are declining. Because they don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And also many churches, they don't develop this relationship. They don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And because of that, many churches, they are declining. And also their members are decreasing. It's so sad. Because it's the Holy Spirit that helps us. To be effective. To be in love with God. Everything that God performed here on earth. He's going to perform and to do through the Holy Spirit. When we come down to the Bible. We begin to associate Holy Spirit to emotions and feelings. And the Holy Spirit in the Bible, if you read, the, if you are a Bible reader, many times the Holy Spirit is seen as a ghost of wind, but He is not wind. He is seen like a fire, but He is not a fire. He is seen in the form of a dove, but He is not a dove. He's seen in a different forms, but he's not it. If I ask you, what is the Holy Spirit? What would you answer me? Who is the Holy Spirit? And what is the Holy Spirit? What would, would you answer me? The Holy Spirit, He is a being. He is a person. 
The problem is that Christian, they have in their heads that the Holy Spirit is the third person of Trinity. That means God the Father is the most important. Jesus is the vice president. And the Holy Spirit gets the third and last place. He comes third in hunk. <laughs> if you know about coming third, you know that's not the position anyone wants to be in. No one knows who is the third. When it comes the Olympic Games, football, football championship, we all know who comes first. Maybe you know who comes second, but no one really cares who comes third. I have a question. Who won the Football World, World Cup 2018? <laughs> Who won? The Football World Cup 2018, last World Cup. France by beating Croatia for two. <laughs> if you remember. Who came third? Who came third? Belgium. <laughs> it was Belgium. Maybe about many countries, you know he is the president. Maybe some of you, you know who is the vice president. But most of the people don't know who is next in line after that. No one knows. When you see the Holy Spirit as the third person, you immediately think of him as less important. This is the problem. Because normally the people say, the Holy Spirit is the third person of Trinity. He's not third. He's not the third person of Trinity. He is a person of Trinity. He's a person of the Trinity. But he's not the third person. When we think of the third place, we immediately think he is the least important. When we read the scripture out of context, because we don't have the right understanding about the person of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit were really not important, if he is not really very important, why is that the blasphemy against the Father and against the Son? You have forgiven. You are for, have forgiven. You are forgiven. But against the Holy Spirit, you are not forgiven. Let's read about Matthew twelve thirty two. Says, anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man or against Jesus will be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Either in this age, age, or in the age to come. He's not the third, my brother, my sister. He's actually the most important person on earth today. We have to remove from our minds. And we need to remove the idea that he is a low, in a lower rank than the father and the son. He is in fact the most important person on earth. He in, here on earth, he is the most important person on earth. 
in Trinity, there is one God manifested in three persons, okay? In Trinity, there is one God manifested in three persons. People have difficulties to understand that. Many people, they have difficulty to understand. How can there be one God and three pers persons? How could it be one God in three persons? And whoever the Bible says, if you read the Bible, the Bible says there is one God. The Lord is one. And the word one here is the same word that is used when the Bible says a man and a wife will join together and will become one. When a husband and a wife become one, do they become one? Yes, but they are still two separate people. They become one. Man and woman, but they are still two different people. When it says the Lord is one, it, do, it does not mean necessary. One as a singular person. It means one God. Just like a husband and wife is one, but they are two different people. We have one God, but He Himself, He reveals Himself in three completely distinct persons. Me and my wife are distinct. We are different beings, but we are one. When we got married, we became one, but we are different beings. That means that we have one God, and He doesn't have two persons, but He has three persons. Father God, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, but He reveals Himself in three persons. And this is so important for you to understand. Because if you do not understand, you are not going to have the relationship with the Holy Spirit. That is the one who lives inside of you. He is, is, going, he is your helper. The one who is going to help you in your temptations. But if you do not have your, a good relationship, if you don't know Him. If you don't have fellowship with Him, you are going to be in trouble. And I want you to, to say something about the Holy Spirit right now. That is very important. First, Holy Spirit is God. He's not a force. He's not a dove. He's not a, a fire. He is God. What makes the Holy Spirit as God is that the Holy Spirit is eternal. And I want you to read now, one verse, Hebrews 9, 14. Just to show that He is eternal. We are not going to talk about the verse. But just to show you that the Holy Spirit is eternal. That says, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit, this is the point, through the eternal Spirit, Offered himself unblemished to God, cleans our conscience from acts that lead us to death, so that we may serve the living God. Well, clearly, the Bible declares the Holy Spirit is eternal, right? Second point the Holy Spirit is omniscient. Omniscient. Omniscient means that he knows everything. 
He knows about your life. He knows even the mind of God, the Bible says. God the Father. Let's read 1 Corinthians 2 verse 10. There are, there are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Wow. The Holy Spirit searches all things. And only God can search all things. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit search all things. Three, third point. Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Psalm 139 verse 7. That says... Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Or the Holy Spirit is everywhere at the same time. You cannot flee, you cannot hide from Him. Because He's God. He's omnipresent. Number four. The Holy Spirit is omnipotent. Potent. Onipotent. That means he is all powerful. Let's read Psalm 104, verse 30. 104, verse 30. That says, When you sent, when you sent your spirit, they are created. You renew the face of the ground. Or when the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes, things come alive. Or they are created. Things are created by the Holy Spirit. And if you remember, in the beginning of the creation, when God was creating, the Holy Spirit was moving and creating things. Number five, Holy Spirit is many times called God. Many times, the Holy Spirit is called God. Let's read Acts, the book of Acts 5, 3 and 4. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land. Attention. Have lied to the Holy Spirit. In verse 4, what made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings. But to God. You know the story. I'm not going to enter in this story. Ananias brought some money to the, to the church. But he kept part of the money back. And here Peter refers to Ananias and says. Why did you allow Satan to fill your heart and lie? To the Holy Spirit. Or what you did. You are not lying to human beings. Or to man. But you are lying. To God. And here Peter used. Holy Spirit. And God interchangeably. As Holy Spirit is God. Six. Number six. Holy Spirit. Is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. The second most important thing about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is a person. Not a fire, not a dove, not a wind. He is a person. What makes somebody a person? Being alive does not make someone a person. A tree 
has life, but it's not a person. Your little dog has life, but it's not a person. It's alive, but it's not a person. What makes somebody a person is personality. What makes somebody a person is their mind, emotions, and will. And the Holy Spirit has these three qualities. The Holy Spirit. He has these three. Wind doesn't have a mind. Wind has no emotions. Fire does not have will. A dove does not have the ability to communicate with you. Holy Spirit has a mind. Holy Spirit has a mind. Romans 8, 27. That says, And he who searches our heart, the Holy Spirit, he who searches our heart, knows the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of of God. Or the Bible mentions the mind of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows the mind of God and He Himself has a mind. He knows the God of the Father and He Himself has a mind. Next point, Holy Spirit has a will. Book of Acts 16, 6. Paul and those, Paul and those who with him went through the areas of Persia and Galatia. Because the Holy Spirit did not allow them to tell the good news in the province, in the province of Asia. Can you see? The Holy Spirit didn't allow them to tell the good news. The Holy Spirit said, no, Paul. No, don't go. Many people think the Holy Spirit is a robot. Fulfilling every command given by God the Father. But the Bible says that Paul was about to preach the gospel... When the Holy Spirit told him not to do. Holy Spirit has its own will. Also you are going to see in the book of Acts 13 verse 2. That says. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. The Holy Spirit said. Look. The Holy Spirit said. Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Or the Holy Spirit set Barnabas and Saul apart. Can you see his will? Also, the Holy Spirit has emotions. Okay? Holy Spirit has emotions. As a person. Ephesians 4 verse 30 says. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. With whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. My brothers. Trees cannot be grieved. Fire cannot be grieved. Only a person can be grieved. The Holy Spirit is very special and very important in the life of everybody. And also in the life of a Christian. In reading the Bible and reading the life of Jesus with some very interesting things. I'm going to share with you. This is very important. Things. I'm going to share now. 
the disciples, they lived and, and they were with Jesus for three and a half years. They witnessed the most extraordinary miracles you can ever witness in. Or they saw wonderful things that Jesus performed. They saw things that would blow your mind away. Some people say, if I see those things that the disciples saw, I would forever be faithful to Jesus. Or some people say, if I could only have the privilege of being with the disciples, your life would be so changed and transformed and you never be the same. Yeah. But the disciples have lived that life for you. Did you know? The disciples live it because they lived with Jesus. They saw a lot of miracles. And they proved one thing. Seeing the miracles of Jesus. And being with Jesus. And Him physically. Doesn't change you. Doesn't change you. Because the disciples. They saw Jesus. Walking on water. They have seen Jesus. Talking to Moses and Elijah. Wow. In the mountain of transfiguration. They have seen Jesus taking five loaves. Loaves breaking it and feeding multitudes. They saw Jesus healing blind people. They saw Jesus resurrecting dead people. But when time came, when persecution came, all cursed Jesus and left Jesus and ran. Did you know? They saw a lot of miracles, but when, when troubles came, all of them ran away. Let's read Matthew 26, 56. Then all the disciples, all, not just five, all, not, not just six, but all the disciples deserted him and fled. All, this, all Jesus' disciples forsook, left him and ran away. Why? This is why God said in Zacharias 4 verse 6 is not by force nor by strength but by my spirit says the Lord not by might or by power but it's by the Holy Spirit and there is something that Jesus in the flesh could not do. There is something that Jesus in the flesh could not do. He could not change their hearts, disciples' heart. No. That's why Jesus said, when he was about to go, he said, It's better for me to go, and I'm going to send you the helper. It's more advantage to you that I go because I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Let's read John 16 verse 7. It says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage. Some versions, version says... It's better for you. He says, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. 
Wow. Or Jesus said, you were with me. You saw miracles. But if I don't live, your inside cannot be changed. You saw many things that I did. But if I don't go, your heart cannot be changed. And when I go, I send you the Holy Spirit. Who will live inside you. And you will be able to live for me. To die for me. And to be used not by power. Not by might, but by my spirit who brings power and the might. My brothers, Jesus said, if the Holy Spirit does not touch our heart, miracles alone cannot change our lives. I have seen many people receiving miracles. I remember one, one woman in Brazil. She could not walk. And she received a prayer. And she, she stood up from a wheelchair. And she was healed. Years ago, she abandoned Jesus. And she became a life. She became a prostitute. Years later. Miracles don't change people's life. In fact, we see in the Bible that the more miracles Pharaoh saw, the harder his heart became. Did you remember? Pharaoh saw a lot of miracles in Egypt. And, and how much more miracles he saw, harder his heart became. The Holy Spirit is what changes our heart. Can you see how important it is the Holy Spirit? Is the one one who can change our hearts. I once thought that the best days were the days lived by Jesus' disciple. I thought, oh, if I could live in that time when Jesus was phys physically with them. But if I believe that, my brothers, I don't believe in what Jesus said. If I believe that the time that Jesus lived with his disciples was better, Jesus didn't say the truth. Because he said, it's better for you that I go. It's better. It's for your advantage. It's better for you and for me. That we have now the Holy Spirit. It's better for you. It's better for me. That the Holy Spirit is in us. Because when the Holy Spirit is inside. You can be changed inside out. When Jesus was physically. With his disciple. All 11 run away. But the story tells us, if you read that the story tells us that the Holy Spirit came inside, inside all of the 11 disciples. And after that, none ever betrayed Jesus Christ again. In the book of Acts, the Bible says they were all together. And suddenly the Holy Spirit came upon them. They were afraid. But when they received the Holy Spirit. When they received the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. They went everywhere. Talking about Jesus. Dying for Jesus. Being crucified for Jesus. And no one. No one of the Jesus disciples denied him. Why? They denied him before. When they were with Jesus. Physically. But they did not deny after they were filled 
with the Holy Spirit. What was inside them was the presence of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, when Jesus was going away, he said, it's better, it's more advantage that I go. The Holy Spirit is better for you than Jesus in the flesh. Jesus in the flesh. You actually can live a life today that is like a little bit better than what the disciples had with the physical Jesus. We now with the Holy Spirit we can live a better life than the life that Jesus' disciples had just with Jesus, physically Jesus. The disciples, my brothers, experienced both of those lives, both with the physical Jesus and other without physical Jesus. And they made history not with Jesus physically, but with the Holy Spirit. This is what I can read here. And we have the privilege to do the same again today. To make history with the Holy Spirit. You can make history with the Holy Spirit. And you need to get to know the Holy Spirit. Not because you speak in tongues. Doesn't mean that you know Him. Or just because you are in church that you know the Holy Spirit. Not just because you play, you, you sing, or you teach, or you read the Bible that you know the Holy Spirit. And also because you experience miracles. Else. Some people say, oh, I have experienced many miracles. Doesn't mean that you know the Holy Spirit. I want to finish this time right now talking about a place maybe you know called Azusa in California, 1906. A man called William Seymour, a man who was born slave, got hungry for the Holy Spirit. And every night he would lay his head on the concrete for two hours praying that God would give him the Holy Spirit and fill him with the Holy Spirit. And also he, he started praying for everybody to receive the Holy Spirit. And the moment God started praying touching people in his churches, in his church, the deacons from church kicked them out from the church, just because they were seeking the Holy Spirit, some churches don't want to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, unfortunately, and every night he prayed, he started praying two hours, for God giving him the Holy Spirit. But nothing happened. Then he increased. His prayer by four hours. And he would pray for six hours. For God to give him the Holy Spirit. And then. The Holy Spirit finally. Came. And one day. He was touched by God. And a great revival came over Azusa. And I have no time to talk about. But please go online go and Google. Revival in Azusa Street, California. And just read, please. You are going to be amazed what happened. Because it's not like uh, one pastor. The Holy Spirit came over all the people. 
And it started with this man praying, crying out for revival, crying out for the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit came upon him. Then the Holy Spirit came upon the people. And then one great revival. And the, the story tells that some children of six, six years of age, just children, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they touched people that who was sick and the people was healed one 11 years old boy he was in church when a blind man and drunk man entered in church and then this boy 11 years old touched him and this man was healed from blindness and also all the drunkenness was gone and this man born again. And my, my brothers, revival can come over our nation, over our town, if we start crying out for the presence of the Holy Spirit. This is what we need most. Would you like to receive His presence? You need it. You need it. But you need to know Him. You need to stood about him. I remember when I received this power of the Holy Spirit. When I, my brother, it was a wonderful experience. And from that time, my life was dramatically changed. I was fighting with sins in my life. I was not, I, 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 I want just to live for myself. Then I became like evangelist, preaching to people. People born again. People knowing Jesus. People getting healed. Why? Not because of me. Not by might or by power. But by my spirit. Please close your eyes. You need to have one encounter with this presence of the Holy Spirit. I, ch I challenge you right now to get to know the Holy Spirit. Spend time praying, fasting, and seeking His presence. Please come to church for prayer meetings. This is a place where we are going to cry out for revival, for God's presence. I believe that God can use us to touch this town, to touch this nation, to touch Europe. To touch Brazil, to touch every nation, but it starts with you. Receiving the presence of the Holy Spirit. With your eyes closed, put your hands in your heart right now. Put your hands in your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to fill you. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill you right now. If you have been dry, or maybe feel like during you are in, in the wilderness, the Holy Spirit wants to fill you, to touch your life. Open yourself for just 30 seconds. Open your heart right now. Let the Holy Spirit enter inside of you. Feel His presence touching you. Begin to say, Holy Spirit, I need you. Start saying, Holy Spirit, I need you. Show to Him that you are interested in Him. Maybe you never talk to the Holy Spirit. He's a person. You need to have fellowship with Him. Start talking to Him. And you can do it right now. You can talk to the Holy Spirit. Maybe you grieved the Holy Spirit. Or you ignored Him. Reconnect right now with Him. Please. He's your friend and He wants to have fellowship with you. Father, I do pray for all my brothers and sisters. Touch their lives, Father. In Jesus' name, pour out your Holy Spirit over their lives. Father, bring revival over our lives. We want to be hungry for your presence. 
In Jesus' name, I pray that may the Holy Spirit can come upon all of your people that is listening and receiving this message right now. Father, fill all of my brother with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name. May God bless you, my brothers. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever. And see you next week with the next message about the Holy Spirit. God bless you in Jesus' name.